Hey guys, it's Jed again. Uh, so, I was going to wait till I was completely finished with all the parts that I had for this video here. Uh, but, uh, I made a stopping point and I was going to wait till I had the rear shocks done as well. Um, but I'm at a stopping point for today, so I'm just gonna, every time I work on it, uh, I'm gonna do a little video on what has changed. And so, real quick, this is gonna be a short one. Uh, I'm tired, it's late, and I got the front shocks done. Uh, you know, one thing I did, a uh, good little thing to know, when you take off the tire to get at the shock, uh, use it underneath the axle to sit your truck on. Works great. Uh, you do need something there, you know, otherwise it just gets funky when you're trying to put stuff back together, uh, when you try to put the shock back together and that worked out great for me, uh, suggest that. And, uh, these cups, they're a little thinner than I expected for a 3d print, but they're just fine. You, you know, they're solid. Uh, they went on really easy considering I, I literally used, I used, uh, these two pairs of pliers is what I use to do the front shocks and which is why I only got two shocks done instead of both shocks. Uh, I, I, uh, it's not returning as much as I'd like, but I'm a novice at the shock oil aspect of doing the shocks. So I'm going to watch another video on, ex, you know, express, uh, what do I say? What's the word for that? exclusively on uh how to fill your shocks with oil and set them up uh i got oil in there i don't know if i have air in there or what uh i know these are smaller st springs and stuff but i'm fine with that for now uh mainly i got them in there uh everything works it went to work together really well as far as the in the works rc shock cups uh the low c mini springs I got the soft ones up front, the pink ones. I'm going to run the firm ones in the rear, and I might go to medium in the front. Uh, I don't know, though. We're going to see. Uh, the tuning of this truck is yet to happen. It's gonna, that's going to happen on the rocks. Uh, I'm, going to take, I'm going to tune this out at Elk Rock Island in Milwaukee, which is just outside of Portland, Oregon, where I'm at, filming this video. That's where I live. Uh, the other thing, I was able to... I don't know if you can see this in this with this light. It's kind of glossy. Uh, I got the pan hard uh, flipped to the right position. Uh, thank you guys on the G Speed Facebook page for setting me straight on that. Uh, that would have been a pain in the butt to not know that. And uh, that worked really great, except for what happened was uh, when I hooked up the, initially when I hooked up the pan hard, uh, at first, I thought it was all good. You know, it, it actually helped the axle from rocking. It gave me it gave me a little bit more clearance and when the shocks bottom out. Uh, there's not as bad tension between the drive shaft and the link that touches, uh, which still does spin freely. So don't be scared to use the stock drive shafts for a while. It's not that big of a deal. It barely touches the link and barely touches the motor mount on this. Uh, so they are usable. You could actually run these. It's just, it just touches a little bit and not enough to really affect performance at all. I'd say just, I can tell by how much it's, there's no pressure on it. Just barely grazes the motor mount and the shock link. And those are big stock TRX4 Sport quarter inch. Uh, the bottom links are quarter inch and they're straight. So if you had high clearance links or three sixteenth links on the bottom, it wouldn't be an issue anyway. So it's not really that big of a deal. And this truck is getting in the works RC custom links. Uh, I, I've heard a lot of good things about hardcore RC links. A lot of the G speeders use them. Uh, I really like in the works. Um, I like how their order is set up for the links. I feel like they have more options and everything when you're ordering a custom set of links. And I really like their setup for ordering custom links. And so, plus the other thing is I got the kit for this transmission from them and the dual servo mount that I'm running is also from them. So when I order the custom links for this, I can just write a note in there. Hey, I'm using your guys' stuff and they'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, so that makes it easy there. Uh, that makes sense to me. So, uh, 
one thing that happened though is that uh, when I hooked up the pan hard, uh, everything wasn't good. What happened was this shock was actually pulling into the frame uh, with the regular spring and cups on there. And what I had to do was take the pan hard back off. And I don't know if you can see this, but let me try to get the angle here. You see the threads on the pan hard link there? It's kind of a shadow, but it's unthreaded. I had to lengthen, I had to unthread that uh, rod in quite a bit, probably more than I wanted to. It's still pretty sturdy. Uh, there's a lot of threads in the Traxxas rod ends. I like them for that. Uh, even though they're kind of big, uh, they're threaded in there pretty deep. So you can, you do have some adjustment. And I was able to adjust that enough to where it's still a little closer on this side than this side, but it's good enough for me to start as a starting point. Uh, and like I said, I'm getting new links, so I'll probably have a different uh, pan hard link when I order those links anyway. And once I get that, then the final tuning will happen. And so that happened. And what I also had to do is I had to, I had the bigger, I want to say nine millimeter spacers, and I dropped down to uh, I want to say six. Uh, these are the sp I'll show you to give you an idea just so I had this length of a spacer on there and I used yeah so I'm pretty sure these are nine and those are six I went to a smaller spacer I still got to change this screw out this is a 30 millimeter uh, this is a 25 over here I like this way better and that's what I'm going to use on the rest when I do the shocks and this one I'll take out and switch with the 25 millimeter screw uh, not going through all this effort to have things janky like that. So, uh, yeah, that happened. So I got that straightened out to where it was an easy fix. At first I was like, oh man, this pan hard is not going to work. It's, it's screwing things up, but I adjusted it and changed the spacers and it's really pretty dang close to where I want it right now. So happy with that. Uh, my, I was also happy this, uh, servo came with a servo horn that looks pretty decent quality. Uh, it's my first time ever putting a servo in. Uh, I just went, th scrolled through the the Team G Speed Facebook page, and I seen this guy's build where he's r running a dual servo mount, and he had a direct power servo. And I seen that his wires were in the front because my instinct was to put these wires in facing the rear. Uh, but I think this is how it is. At least that's how he had his. So this is. I went ahead and threw that on there. Uh, I do want to say these little tiny screws. So I got this servo horn, I'm like, oh, it's got two directional screws, right? So I threw it on there and tightened those screws up and I was getting some slippage right away. Even, you know, I tightened them up like three different times. I was still getting slippage. And then I realized that there's a screw in the bottom of the servo as well. So I went ahead and threw an M3 in the bottom of this. And this is a nice 25 tooth. It's a little bit longer than the Traxxas one. I do have another uh, metal servo horn that's actually uh, steel, not aluminum, that came in the TRX4 Sport Kit, and it's a little shorter, so I might actually run that because this does come out about a quarter inch past my front spacer, and so on my bumper, I'm getting an IERC front bumper. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to get the double, whatever's in stock, the double or the triple bull bar bumper to go on here uh i really like that they have i really like punk's customs uh the way he his bumper order is set up because they have a g-speed width on their bumpers and you can choose the width of your bumper which i really like you know some of the measurements on some of the other pages it, it doesn't even really give you that good of measurements on the bumpers on some of the other pages it just tells you models and stuff and i don't really like that the punk's custom uh, bumper ordering experience is actually the best one I found yet and it's really good I think it should be that way you should have different widths you should know exactly what millimeter the outside and inside is going to be of the bumper you're ordering you know because it just helps a lot of guys do a lot of scale stuff and comp uh, oriented builds and hey, if you're going to pay 50 70 bucks for a set of bumpers it's like hey I want to know what I'm getting just don't want to do trial and error on that so 
this servo mounted up really easily is four screws the dual servo uh, mount mounted up fairly easy the one thing I do want to say I had a little issue with these I don't know if it's just the flathead screws but this pan hard mount comes over into where this servo mounts in where this bolts up it it railed on this pan hard mount pretty hard it's not even as flush as the other screws on here because it's like ground up against the pan hard there it like left dents in it and everything so that was a little bit of a hang up but i got it to work it's i mean it's in there solid that thing is not going anywhere uh so that's basically what i got done since the last time i did the build uh still need to do the rear shocks and that's about it i haven't really i like this little battery tray i got uh, at first I didn't like it, but it's a lot stronger than I initially thought it looked cheap until I Wrenched it around in my hand and squeezed on it and it's actually really strong and really light and I actually want to paint it. I think I want to paint it. I want to paint the letters or something uh, and What I've decided is I really think I'm going to if I can find the space like honestly if over here somewhere if i can throw a servo winch with the carbon fiber mount somewhere on this truck i don't know where exactly yet but the mount's only like 15 bucks uh or 20 it's under 25 dollars. i know that the carbon fiber g-speed uh winch mount i think i am going to end up laying this servo down just because I feel like I'll get uh, more room up here. I think I'll get better steering angles. And uh, because of that, I think I'm going to end up going with just the lay down mount for the servo. I'm starting to see why a lot of why that's so popular. Uh, but other than that, that's all I got done today. And all I have coming out of this order is I still have some tools coming. I have some eco power tools. Um, one thing, the biggest thing that I've learned is that I need tools. I need decent, I need quality tools, especially your drivers, your drivers. Uh, uh, I didn't think shock pliers were necessary. They are, they're very necessary. Even without the shock oil on the shaft, I could barely get the shaft to stay put without marring up the steel. Uh, because even with wrapped up in this towel, it was still spinning even when I was wrenching on it really hard. Uh, so I'm definitely buying a pair of shock pliers. Um, I got a little toolkit, a little beginner's toolkit coming of drivers and sockets and stuff like that. The Eco Power, the $25 Eco Power toolkit off A Main's coming. I got some scissors. Uh, I went and priced out everything I could possibly think I would need as far as tools are concerned for an RC project. And with an airbrush, a whole airbrush kit and a, uh, a battery driver, a heat gun, a soldering station, a glue gun, uh, a Dremel set, uh, mini pliers, mini vice grips, uh, like watch repair drivers and all that stuff all together is is like right around 600 bucks from harbor freight and i think what i'm going to do after this build instead of build, spending a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars on a truck first i'm just gonna get i'm just gonna save up 600 bucks and buy all that stuff so i have it and have a little station uh set up and then start putting together my next truck and my next truck most likely is going to be a axle raw builders kit on carbon fiber v3 i'm going to do a straight axle build it might be a hard body probably will just be a cliffhanger or a lloyd body uh just i just want a straight axle build and uh eventually i think i'll just make it a, a cliffhanger body but eventually i i there's a chance i might make it a class one but i just don't think i'm ready to go to do a class one because in my mind that's a harder build uh, the class one and class three are a little bit harder than class two, in my opinion, or at least it seems like it would be, uh, with the hard body and all that. Uh, but I'm definitely 
I'm definitely doing a straight axle build right away because I just want to have a lower truck and have a competitive truck. And I've seen that a lot of people are running straight axles. I really like the AR44s. I like the looks of them better than the element axles. I like the fact that the element transmission comes with overdrive. I really like the element builder's kit. It has better shocks. It has better links, but I'm probably not going to use 12.3 links anyway. And uh, I don't like running the, I like running the, 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 springs in between the body and the cup here because it just gives you a lot more clearance on these builds and uh i don't like having to use a big wide spacer on these because you're on a low cg build it's just like you only have so much room and that stuff makes a big difference so uh the element shocks are only so good and the links are nice but I'm probably not going to use those either. And I like the AR44s better. I really do. And so uh, I can get overdrive in the axles and get some beef tubes for them. And I think that's what I'm going to do on my next build. And I think I'm going to make it a lighter build. This truck's pretty heavy. It's got carbon steel frame. And it's pretty, it's pretty hefty. Um, I don't know what it weighs yet. I'm going to find out once I get it closer to being done. And... Uh, with that, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, my next build is going to have carbon fiber wheels. And it's going to have some brass in the front. But carbon fiber wheels, carbon fiber frame. And it's going to have a lighter transmission in it. I don't know if I'll go with the two low. I'll probably just go with the axle three gear. Uh, it's, it's lighter than this transmission, I'm pretty sure. But we'll see. And with that, I'm out. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, hit like and subscribe, would you? I'd really appreciate it. And leave a comment if you want. All right, bye.